Hi, and welcome to Enchantment of Eternity's review of Room and why I think it is one of the best movies of all time. This video is for the 2015 movie Room, starring Brie Larson and Jacob Tremblay, and directed by Lenny Abrahamson. Uh, this is not about the 2003 Tommy Wiseau movie The Room, which is widely considered the worst movie ever made. They just unfortunately have similar titles. So when I say Room is one of the best movies of all time, I'm being serious and without a hint of sarcasm or irony. The first part of this video will be spoiler free however I will give a spoiler warning before I get into the spoiler section of this video so a while ago I did a series of videos counting down my top 50 favorite movies of all time which is actually more like my lifetime uh, than all time as I only included movies from the past 40 years because I'm not really into classic movies uh, So these weren't like the most popular or critically acclaimed movies or movies you typically find on top 10 lists These were my personal favorites. However, um, after seeing Room, I think I would put this movie not only in my top 10, but my top 5, more specifically at number 4, just behind Memento, Donnie Darko, and 12 Monkeys. So Room was released in film festivals just over a year ago and to the general mass audiences uh, over six months ago and on DVD and streaming services a few months ago. So I'm a bit behind on this review, however I wanted to time to let this movie sink in and not just jump the gum before proclaiming it to be one of my favorite movies of all time. But after seeing it over four times now, I think it's safe to make the proclamation as I think it represents some of the best aspects of filmmaking. I did talk about this movie already in my top 10 movies of 2015 video, which I'll leave a link in the description below for that video, where this was of course my number one. I think it's fair to say that this is my favorite movie of the decade so far. This isn't the typical movie uh, that I cover on this channel, as I tend to stick more with fantasy or science fiction or more action or suspense based movies, however I love this movie so much I feel the need to talk about it. So this is a slow paced drama, probably the slowest paced movie I would consider one of my favorites as I tend not to go for slow paced movies and can find them boring if not done right. However I make a huge exception for this movie as it just gets so much right and the acting is simply amazing. It's fair to say I believe this movie should have swept the Oscars in every category it was eligible for rather than simply Brie Larson winning for Best Actor actress, which she did of course totally deserve, but I've long ago lost faith in the Oscars as it's all about politics anyway, so who cares about that. So if you haven't seen this movie, the first thing I would recommend is not to watch the trailer, as this trailer more than any other gives far too much away and it's much better to go into this movie knowing next to nothing about the plot and for that reason I won't get too much into what this movie is about until I get to my spoiler section. Suffice to say it's about a five year old boy who lived his entire life in a single room with his mother and he believes that room is all that exists. It's a very interesting concept and although the film is a straight up realistic film and does have a lot of slice of life traits to it. It tells a story that is a rarity in life and hard for most people to imagine uh, what this would be like and thus although being totally realistic it does have a fantastical element to it which may contribute to why I find this film so fascinating. But more than fascinating this is by far the biggest tearjerker I've ever seen in my life. I've seen this movie four times now and I have yet to make it through all the way without crying. A lot. <laughs> and I'm not typically the one to cry in movies. In fact, I'd say it's actually rare and it's quite a difficult task for a movie to get me to cry. And I've never cried as much in any other movie in my entire life as I had in this one. And that's not to say this is a melodrama. In fact, this movie played it very subtly uh, most of the time. And one of the main reasons why I love it so much is that it typically isn't on the nose with its dramatic scenes, which to me makes it even 
even more powerful. In fact, I would say that this movie repeatedly breaks typical Hollywood uh, and filmmaking conventions and in the best way. Those who are familiar with my channel may have noticed I used the word um, cliche a lot when giving negative reviews, as I think, especially in this day and age, originality is a rare thing in TV and movies which tend to recycle old ideas. However, Room is a great example of a film that's completely original and didn't seem cliche at all, not in the least. It had a theme uh, with strong characters and it's realistically stuck to these characters, avoiding any typical Hollywood cliches while at the same time breaking conventions of filmmaking at every turn. For example, this film has one of the most suspenseful, intense scenes I've ever seen in any movie, but instead of playing it typically with like dark Dark, suspenseful music and jump scares. It focuses on the all involved in that scene and actually had inspiring music playing which contrasted the tenseness of the scene which still came through very strongly because it was built up to so well and this film basically spoke for itself. And overall, the music in this film was amazing and worked so well to build on the emotional impact of the story and used all at the right moments and its absence when it needs to be as well. The music in itself is just very emotionally powerful on its own, but is made even more so by the film. For example, one of the songs used in this film is a song I was already familiar with before even seeing this film, a song by a post-rock band, This Will Destroy You, called The Mighty Rio Grande, which I had already considered one of the most beautiful songs even before seeing this film, and the way the film used it was simply amazing. And the original score was equally as beautiful as it's hard for me to listen to the song that was playing during the, in, uh, the ending sequence without tearing up at least a little. Room is based off of a novel, and the novelist also worked with uh, the director to write the screenplay for the movie, and the two of them worked really closely on this film. I myself have not read the novel, however, there were many that were skeptical that it would translate well to film, so uh, as I'm sure the novel is great as well, I can tell that a lot of what makes this film great is due to the decisions the filmmakers themselves made, as it seems to me that the film could have easily been botched, and just because the novel was great didn't exactly follow that the film would be great as well and that the filmmakers made all the right decisions from casting, to musical choices, to shot composition, to art to design, to editing, and there were even scenes added in the film that weren't in the novels as they thought that the film structure needed them. Uh, this film about dark and de potentially depressing subject matter was played through the eyes of a five-year-old boy as we get the film mostly from his perspective and he's often too young to understand the gravity of the situations depicted and thus his perspective of the entire world being made up uh, with this just one room also of course really colors thing which is why I would recommend not knowing too much about this film coming in because it puts you in the mindset of this innocent young child who doesn't really understand what's going on either which really adds to the experience. Those familiar with my channel may also have noticed I love to point out flaws and nitpicks that I have even with my favorite shows and movies however for once I have nothing to say negative about this. I suppose the only downsides I could say if somebody forced me to is that the film can move rather slowly at times, particularly in the second half. But honestly, that doesn't bother me at all as the overall film is just so powerful, it's just very easy to overlook. So now's the time where I get into my spoiler section of this video, so if you haven't seen this film yet, please, for your own benefit, turn this video off now Go see this amazing film and come back once you've seen it, and thanks a lot for watching. But, those of you who have seen it can continue as I get into spoilers, as I'm about to right now. So another thing that really attracts me to this film is that I'm a huge fan of movies that take place entirely in one room, such as Reservoir Dogs or the Ethan Hawke Richard Linkletter film Tape. 
Now, to mention my favorite Star Trek episode from any Trek series, the Deep Space Nine episode Duet, that mostly takes place in one interrogation room. As I feel, it's kind of easy to dazzle people with intense action sequences, mind-blowing CGI, sweeping scenery shots, or fancy cinematography. However, uh, having most of the movie take place in just one room and comprise mostly of dialogue, to me that is far, far more impressive when they manage to make it just as engaging and intense. And although only the first half of this film takes place in one room, that's still really impressive, especially since it is such a small room. So this, I think, uh, makes me even more impressed with this film. Although the film is very dialogue heavy, a lot of it is played in subtext and relies on what they don't say just as much as what they do. For example, the scene where Ma uh, sends Jack away playing dead wrapped in a uh, rug is doubly powerful, not just because he is attempting an escape, but also because Ma realizes that it's a real possibility that she will never see him again, and it's possible that old Nick will kill her for attempting the escape, so part of the reason she did it uh, was so just Jack could escape, uh, which also makes the moment uh, where they're reunited all the more powerful. And I mentioned the suspenseful scene uh, that was played uh, differently. That was, of course, the moment of Jack's escape, which was so tense and suspenseful. I've heard some critics describe it as one of the most suspenseful scenes they've ever seen in any movie, and I have to totally agree with that. However, another thing that makes the scene so amazing is that it focuses not on the escape, but more on how this is the first time Jack has ever been outside of room, so it shows the absolute awe on his face of being introduced to the world. And that's something the film does so well in putting you in the mindset of a five-year-old who doesn't know about the world, and that's what really makes it unique. As most films uh, that would cover similar subject matter would focus more on the criminal and be like all dark and suspenseful, but instead it actually goes out of its way to avoid showing old Nick, and they only show him when absolutely necessary because they make it clear that this isn't his movie, it's Jack's movie, and this is where the film really gets its power from as rather than being a thriller played to scare you it puts you in the mindset of a child who sees the world so differently than what we're used to in fact although we do get some scenes uh, some sense of the traumatic effect this has had on Ma this isn't her film either it's a uh, played more for to show what effect this has had on Jack and how he handled this much better because he's too young to understand the implications of what has happened. So another thing I think makes this film unique is that it completely and totally changes halfway through the movie. As the first half tells the story of Jack and Ma being trapped in the room, uh, but the second half about how they cope with the world. And I really, really appreciate this as it feels more like a complete story than so many other films whose natural instinct would be to either just be about two people trapped in the room trying to get out and, or about two people dealing with the aftermath of being trapped in the room and start when they get out. I do get the feeling that that's what most films would do, and this one is unique for actually showing both sides. In fact, the director mentioned how he felt it was really two films being told, but they both built off and were dependent on each other and couldn't exist without one another. I can see many who might think that it would be anticlimactic to keep the movie going after the escape, but I love how it just happens halfway through the movie because if they did play it that way, it would make the film more about trying to escape. However, that wasn't the focus of the film. Nor was it about uh, two people dealing with the trauma after their rescue. The film's main focus was on a child who lived his whole life in one tiny room who believed it was all that existed, getting out into the world and discovering the world for the first time. And for that, you need to see both sides of him living in the room to get his perspective and also the perspective of Ma and how she was desperate to get out and how traumatic it was for her to be in there. And you also need to see how Jack actually copes with living in the real world. One of my favorite scenes in the whole film is where Jack is in the hospital when he first wakes up after his escape, as you can really 
feel the sense of wonder through his eyes about waking up in a whole new world he never knew existed. I thought this was amazing, and the second half of the film explored how strong the bond between Jack and Ma is, and how it was tested by being out in the real world where they no longer lived as close, but how they came through, through it together in the end, and his strength is what helped her get through coping with this trauma that she experienced, and you can really feel the love she has for her son come off so well. I don't think I've ever seen uh, a film that you know expressed uh the uh, motherly love uh so well so perfectly now i realize this film isn't going to be for everyone and not everyone is going to love it as much as i do particularly those that prefer uh, more fast-paced action to slow-paced dramas and that's fine but out of curiosity i looked up what people didn't like this movie were saying and a few called it unrealistic that a woman and her son could be locked up above ground for seven years without anyone noticing. And the sad truth is, it's not unrealistic. As you can Google Ariel Castro to find uh, real-life examples that were actually much worse than what was depicted in the film. Although it is an extreme rarity, it has happened. Although the author of Room stated it wasn't inspired by any specific case, you can certainly see some parallels to it, which is a very scary thought. And the other criticism which completely misunderstands this film is that it tries to justify or downplay the horrors victims of such crimes experience, which isn't the case at all, as although the main focus is on Jack, who is too young to understand the implications of what's happening, you certainly can see the toll it takes to the depiction of Ma and through Brie Larson's amazing performance. And with uh, particular regard to the scene at the end where she says goodbye to Room, that that had a lot more to do with her confronting her demons and moving beyond the trauma she experienced there and Jack's perspective of that being the only world he knew helps her move beyond it which is why that ending was one of the most powerful and touching endings in cinematic history. So I'm not going to bother giving it a rating out of 10. Obviously, you know I'm going to give it a 10. I've said, already said it's one of my favorite movies of all time, and I'm totally sticking by this. This film has touched me like no other has, even more so than films like The Shawshank Redemption or Leon the Professional, which I would definitely put on par in terms of quality of filmmaking. So it's not hyperbole when I say Room is a masterpiece in everything I think films should aspire to. So that's it for my review of Room. Be sure to check out my channel for many more movie reviews, as well as many more videos on shows like Game of Thrones, Star Trek, Mr. Robot, Dark Matter, and more. And be sure to subscribe so you can keep up with all of that. And thanks a lot for watching.